Battle of Sidan. Sarmachars uprooted the enemy's feet. January 25th, 6 p.m. when a red flame flared up in the fading rays of the sun. In winter, there are intermittent cold waves in these areas of Makuran. Each wave lasts for a few days or a week. The severity of the cold had also increased on Tuesday because of the snowfall in the northern parts of Balochistan. The evening was drawing to a close but the sun was still shining. In Kahirkar, about 1.5 km from Sibdan village of Dash, Tehsil of Kesh district, soldiers stationed at a Pakistani army checkpoint were aware of the fading rays of the sun. After being awake all day in a state of stress, at night many people would be thinking of rest that they were suddenly attacked by Baloch freedom fighters from many directions. The attack was so intense and unpredictable that Pakistani troops did not get a chance to recover. Already in the attack, most of the troops were piled up and only one soldier was able to escape. Sarmachar seized weapons and set fire to the check post before reinforcements arrived. The smoke was visible from the local population at a distance of one and a half kilometer. In this attack, 13 soldiers were killed at the checkpoint while one escaped unhurt. More troops coming to the aid of the soldiers were also attacked by Baloch Freedom Fighters which destroyed two motorcycles and killed four more personnel on board. A total of 17 enemy troops were killed. BLF adheres to the principles of consistency, patience, perseverance and self-criticism. The Balochistan Liberation Front claimed responsibility for the attack. The Balochistan Liberation Front has the distinction of being the first such armed resistance organization of Baloch political activists whose leadership is committed to the principles of collective leadership rather than being in the hands of an influential tribal or powerful figure. The activists of this organization claim that the decisions of this organization are made on an institutional basis. Through this organization, politics-minded activists in armed liberation organizations which were subordinate of tribal figures disagreed with the decision in their organizations against the Baloch national interest after the session. Following the footsteps of the BLF, they are trying to advance their organizations on an institutional basis. Baloch journalist Kazi Dad Muhammad Rehan said in a tweet that BLF is driven by the principles of consistency, patience and self-criticism. Kazi Rehan further said that in his journalistic and political journey, he has been observing all the organizations through his statements and actions undoubtedly. The leaders of all the armed liberation organizations with equal sincerity, passion and maturity are super brave in the face of the enemy in the field. But the way each organization is unique, the BLF also has its uniqueness. There is an organizational humility in the BLF. BLF statements do not exaggerate the events of the war but also deliberately avoid mentioning their strategy. The media campaign launched to damage the reputation of the BLF even after the abduction and martyrdom of Rahmdil Mari, a member of the organization's command council, 
was tolerated by the organization's leadership. Such acts thwarted the forces and conspiratorial elements that pushed the Baloch national movement to the brink of catastrophe, and eventually the BLF succeeded in forming an alliance with its former opponents under the name of Biras. Location of Siddhan It is important to mention that the Siddhan is not only on the border of Iran and Pakistan but also at a distance of 181 kilometers from the nearest area. From a military point of view, the inner 5 kilometers distance of the occupation is also quite long in which the story of infiltration can be made up but it, it is not easy to prove. The Baloch Sarmachars do not use vehicles in these areas. If they had tried to cross the border with the seized weapons and the body of their maritime comrade, it would have taken them about 36 hours without stopping. But this is a shame, there is a claim which has no reality. Siddhan is just 60 km from Turbat, which can be easily reached in an hour by ordinary vehicle, while there are also Pakistani army check, uh, check posts and camps, from where it is easy to send aid to the troops, and the Kahir Kor check post was also helped promptly, but the Baloch freedom fighters not only repulsed them, but also inflicted more casualties. The area of Siddhan is close to Mirani Dam. This area of Balochistan is not densely populated but there are small villages far away. A large number of Pakistani troops are also deployed at Mirani Dam. It is an important place for the Pakistani military in terms of security. The Pakistan army is, is stationed at most of the dams and water reservoirs in Balochistan due to which it is easy to understand that it intends to use water as a weapon against the local population in an unusual situation. Located in Kahir Kaur, the check post was relatively safe for the enemy and a difficult target for Baloch freedom fighters. But in Balochistan, even at safe havens, Pakistani troops are restless because Baloch freedom fighters are experts in the guerrilla warfare. One of the most dangerous combat techniques in the world? A series of attacks on local populations by the Pakistani army in the past, torturing of civilians, enforced disappearances after detention, and during the period of dumping the mutilated bodies. The Baloch freedom fighters changed their tactics, which is a feature of guerrilla warfare. The Pakistani military has always known that it could not compete with Baloch freedom fighters in the mountains. It spends all its energies on the elimination of sympathizers of the Baloch freedom fighters and pro-independent political activists in the urban population. In these brutal acts, Houses were set on fire, women were raped and collective punishments were meted out. Since then, no effort has been spared to destroy the social and political structure by spreading the net of local death squads in the areas. Pakistani military planners were convinced by the facilitated criminals that they had weakened the Baloch freedom fighters by cutting off their ideological and military supply lines. From time to time, such claims have been made by the ISPR that the back of the Baloch Sarmachars have been broken and they have fled. But this was a period when the Baloch Sarmachars were considering new changes in their war strategy. They soon reduced the pride of the Pakistani army to dust. More deadly attacks on the Pakistani army began to take place 
across Pal Balochistan. All the Baloch armed freedom fighters carried out systematic attacks and inflicted heavy losses to the enemy. Makuran had already become important to the enemy because of China Pakistan economic corridor, and Baloch also made it their battlefield. In Makuran, a network of outposts set up under the Pakistan Army's special strategy, which was set up for the security of the main camp and check post, came under attack. These attacks thwarted the strategy of the Pakistan Army, and in a few attacks, this strategy of the Pakistan Army proved to be a wall of sand and its network of security posts was broken. Dr. Allah Nizar Baloch, a key leader of the Balochistan Liberation Front, said in an interview that he always had an alternative option. Similarly, Major Guharam, spokesperson of Balochistan Liberation Front, had said in a recent interview that they decide their war strategy according to the circumstances. But Pakistani military planners and their think tanks always fly in the air. They feel that Baloch freedom fighters always depend on the external assistance. They even call their attacks an external conspiracy. So after the formation of the Taliban government in Afghanistan, it was understood that the attacks of Baloch Sarmachars would decrease. But as the intensity of these attacks increased and with most of the attacks on the Goldsmith line, their accusations have now shifted to Iran. Now they are blaming Iran for the attack by Baloch freedom fighters. Pakistan's anger with India over the neighboring countries and Baloch refugees? It has never been hidden or kept secret that Balochistan has deep historical and cultural ties with both Afghanistan and Iran. When the Pakistani army targeted the local population, the relatives and families of the Baloch exiles were forced into exile, and thousands of affected families moved to western Balochistan administered by Afghanistan and Iran. In Pakistan's sites, these children and women are the cause of the, uh, this war. So first they were evicted from their homes and when they took refuge with their relatives in the, uh, in the neighboring countries and western Balochistan, now their homes were presented as safe havens for Sarmachars. The Pakistani army is also using its tools to kill Baloch refugees in Afghanistan and western Balochistan. Most of the attacks target relatives or political activists of Baloch freedom fighters, which are advertised by the Pakistani military's social media accounts as a key target. The media tries to make it look as if a key Baloch warlord has been targeted. Razak, a nationalist, was recently abducted and killed in Afghanistan. The Pakistani military has told its mercenary media that a key BLA commander in Afghanistan has been removed. Pakistani army officers also do this to deceive their system to make as much money as possible. Anti-Iranian rhetoric in response to the attack by Baloch Sarmachars?
سنی اینڈ شیعہ کنٹراڈکشنز آر بہائنڈ پاکستان اینیمیٹی ٹوورڈز ایران پاکستان از ٹرائنگ ٹو شو دیٹ دیر از نو ڈیپ فرینڈ شپ اینڈ نو پرابلم بٹوین دا ٹو کنٹریز بٹ ڈیو ٹو دا شیعہ سنی ڈفرینسز ان دا ریجن بوتھ آر اسٹینڈنگ ان اپوزٹ ڈائریکشنز ڈیو ٹو دا لارج نمبر آف پیپل بلانگنگ ٹو دا شیعہ سیکٹ ان پاکستان پاکستان از ریلیکٹنٹ to come out openly in this conflict but in the eyes of the military dominated sunni ideological establishment it is happily involved in the behind the scenes operations against it iran is a shock and behind the scenes actions against it include happiness rolling back the iran pakistan gas pipeline project bringing the case of kulbush and yadav to the fore when the high level leadership of iran and pakistan meeting It is the thought behind everything. Now a similar statement is coming out even after the battle of Sabdan. Evidence has emerged that the Pakistani military plans to occupy western Balochistan in the event of Iran's instability. Pakistan sees the move of the world powers against Iran as if Turkey is worried about the emergence of Kurdish national power in Syrian Kurdistan in the situation in Syria. or it is worried about an independent Kurdish government in Iraq. Pakistani military reconnaissance missions sent to map Iran's military installations have been exposed, behind which there is a glimpse of Pakistan's aggressive military thinking. It is the policy which was modeled by the Iranian ruler Mohammad Reza Shah Pahlavi in the past. He had said that if Pakistan become unstable, It would occupy East Balochistan. He considered Balochistan as the buffer zone of Iran for which he used the word pasture. At that time that Balochistan is the pasture of Iran. With the appearance of this thought in the Pakistani army and the availability of useful signs on the ground from Western Balochistan, regarding this self-confidence is being created. Military planners cautiously control propaganda against Iran to foster was so that a front could be opened against Iran in times of need. Now they want to justify the attacks of Baloch Sarmachars. Mertair Mumtaz Ilyas Baloch of Sibdan Betal Every success requires sacrifice. While the Baloch nation is rejoicing over the success of the Baloch Sarmachars, a promising son of the homeland has gone to sleep in the embrace of motherland forever. Mumtaz Ilyas Baloch, a young Sarmachar, was martyred in the retaliatory attack by the enemy while fighting in the front line in the Battle of Sibdan. According to Major Guhram, He was buried to a safe place by Baloch fighters on Tuesday night. There are many princes buried in the mountains of Balochistan who would surely tell the story of their greatness in the golden age of independence. The battle of Sibdan is not a complete victory, of course, but it would surely raise the courage of the Baloch nation. The nation has witnessed that how the soldiers of the in- homeland are fighting with many times more military strength than their own despite the scarcity of numbers and resources there is only one reason for the economic political and uh, state misery of pakistan and that is the war against the baloch nation which he always tries to hide because of his ego but this spark is now about to burn and consume the existence of the state
Zrombeš.